Hi, this is Paul, and this is a quick introduction to the custom scripts I've written for the Icon P1M and V1M for use with Studio One. You'll notice that my P1M display here says Bitwig. This is because I've had to use the Bitwig setting in the firmware uh, in order to get the metering to work properly. That's just the controller setting though. I'm definitely connected to Studio One here and these scripts do not work with Bitwig. Uh, the most obvious thing you can see is that we have four lines of text. Um, this makes the whole thing a lot easier to use because you have a lot more information so you can orient yourself um, a lot better. As you can see, we've got uh, not only the track names, but also the track numbers down here. And it also shows you the automation status for each track. So here we've got three in read, and this one here is in touch mode at the moment. And um, we've also got the track colors coming through from Studio One. And if we change, for example, the one on the base DI, we can see as we sweep the color, it just changes instantly on the control surface. The time code you'll notice uh, is also improved because we, we now have dots uh, in between the, the different segments, so beats, bars, uh, uh, etc. That makes it a lot easier to read than just having the, all the numbers running together. Uh, there's a lot more parameters that you can access as well um, than the Mackie script. So we've got this track scene here where the VPOTs are connected to the input gain control. And pressing it inverts the polarity. That's just one example of things you can't do with the Mackie scripts, but there are others that the sends have uh, a lot more access to things like pre fader, post fader, etc. The metering uh, is been much improved. Um, the main th uh, these are accurate to within 0 0.01 decibels, and the zero position has been moved into much better position and it's at the top of the orange segments uh, that's the way I've got it set up um, you can also opt to have it at the top of the green segments if you want uh, on the Mackie control I think zero dB is somewhere in the second or third orange segment so it's no use to anybody really uh, with this you can clearly see uh, when you're hitting zero dB and also when you're going over because uh, the red light will light up, which is something that the Mackie control uh, script can't do. So if you, uh, if we just have a look at this base DI here, as we push it up, we can see now that it starts going over zero dB. So it's much more informative. Now, the other thing we can do is switch the meters from level metering into gain reduction metering. And we just do that by pressing the flip button. So now we can see we've got a compressor on two channels here. We've got the base DI and the room. Now you can see the room here is doing around three decibels of compression uh, at its maximum. So again, it's a lot more useful. Um, the pips actually mean something. And the other thing to notice on the metering is that the master meters also work on the script. So you can if we put into master mode then um, this this uh, master level output meter is working and again it's zero db at the top of the orange uh, orange section one thing that was annoying on the mackie scripts was matching up the position of the control surface with the display of the console in in the studio one program so now if we uh, were on sort of the left hand side of my console view here but if we bank along and we go to see this piano here. As you can see on the console, the piano isn't visible. Um, but when I select this piano uh, track here, you can, you'll see that the console will jump so that the piano is, is, in, is in view. And there it is. Now the opposite is also true. Um, although you have to press a button on the, on the console to get it to, to flip. So if we go back now, and uh, let's see just we just go back to this snare drum here but now we want to see that on the control surface we can just press the locate button uh, which is there and it immediately jumps to the correct bank uh, which the snare is in and you can see the select is lit there so it's easily identifiable which is the selected track there another feature worth pointing out is the reset to default uh, feature so on the VPOTs, anything that's connected to the VPOTs, you can 
you can reset to its default position by clicking it with the shift mode mode engaged. There's two ways to get the shift active. You can either hold it down, you can see under my finger there, and then when you release it, it goes off. Or if you tap it, it'll latch on, and you can tap it again to latch off. So if we, uh, let's mess around with this hi-hat input gain here, uh, to get that back to zero dB, activate shift and click it, and it goes back to zero. Similarly with the faders, if we move this down, if you ever want the faders back to zero dB, shift and then tap, and it goes back to zero, and then take the shift off. Those are just some of the improvements I've made over the Mackie script. If you'd like to try the scripts for yourself, you can go to the forum and everything you need will be there. The link for that will be in the description. There's comprehensive documentation for installation and a user guide. And there's also video um, tutorials as well. The video tutorials go in depth into how to use each of these four scenes that I've devised. So I'll see you in the next videos. Thanks.